I started to collect vinyls when I was like, I don't know, four years old or something. Yeah. So music was my everything. Four years old? That's yeah, that so was, young. That's, that's when I got my first vinyl and I was that's so crazy. into it. Yeah. My dad right now is actually, he's a farmer in Thailand. I was signed, I was a rapper. Oh, yeah. is this stuff still out? It is out. Skateboarding my whole life. It's yeah. Skateboard brought me to music. It wasn't that I... I uh, was into music and then skateboarding. Skateboarding was always, always number one. Second person to commit to having fly me over to the U.S. to work was JC. Family and and the touring life of dance music is just so heavy. Like it doesn't matter if we are in a cycle of a new album or out of it, because we tour all year anyway. Yeah. You know, it's like Damn. there's like basically no weekends we would ever be anywhere but at a, yeah. you know, on stage. And yeah. was it that you got the inspiration from like an aviary in Hong Kong? Yes, for okay. the album it was. I know exactly where that is because I'm from Hong Kong. Oh, so really? I think I know which aviary you're talking about. Yes. And I read that, I was like, oh my god, I have to bring this up. Hi, Sadam, I'm here with Christian from Galantis. Yay! <laughs> I was born in the, on a little island in Sweden. Oh, called, yeah, what's it called? Loftahammar, or it's, uh, in the archipelago. So, yeah. yeah. I moved from there when I was uh, 13. Oh, yeah. okay. How many I, people are there? It's like a... Um, under a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> so more like 500 maybe. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. How do you describe yourself like growing up? Uh, very, very high energy. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I was that like easy of a child. Mm -hmm. You know, but I wanted how to do so? every. I wanted to do everything yeah. all the time. Yeah. You know. And how like was it? I mean, it's such a small town, but like you cultivated your like music interest. What like was there like even a music scene? No, no music scene. I started to collect vinyls when I was like I don't know four years old or something. Yeah. So music was my everything. Four years old. That's yeah, that so was, young. Yeah, that's, that's when I got my first vinyl, and I was that's so crazy. into it. Yeah. So your so, parents must have been like super into music then. Oh well, they I, I don't know how other parents are actually. Yeah. So I have nothing to compare, but they, I I did grow up with listening to music all the time because they were playing music. So I guess so, yeah, but I, I you know, I don't know how other parents yeah. are, but you know. Yeah. What kind of music did they play in the house? Uh, a lot of Pink Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And what are their careers in? Uh, we're, I mean, I'm a working class generation, so, mm -hmm. yeah, so, both, uh, my dad right now is actually, he's a farmer in Thailand. Damn. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> So that's why you yeah. moved out there. Okay, that makes no, sense. No, I took him there. Oh, okay. Yes, <laughs> I moved there, and then he came to visit, and then he never left, and I left, and he stayed. So, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And how about your mom? My mom is now starting to work for me. Wow, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it like is. a family it business now. Yes. If you knew that Galantis is a family <laughs> business. <laughs> they must have like made you super interested in music, right? Like at a young age they really cultivated you or was it just yourself that you it found was, yourself through music? You know what it was? It was me wanted to do what I wanted to do and um, they tried to make me stay in school and mm. stuff as much as they could. But when they saw that wasn't gonna happen they started to support what I did like, oh, you know? Okay, yeah. So they started to be like supportive of me buying instruments and uh, studio equipment wow. or re trying to get a rehearsal space yeah. and, you know, turning on my drum machine and my guitar. <laughs> oh. Yeah. In school, were your favorite subjects music or what else were you interested in, in school? Uh, well, uh, it was, music was a good thing for me there. Like, uh, it, it really helped me early on to start programming and stuff. Oh. So it was good. Um, otherwise, I wasn't much there, to be honest. You're much of a school kid. I wasn't there much, no. Yeah. But pretty early on, you already got like an internship, right? Yeah, I got an internship. Uh, I got signed as a 15 year old. Damn. Yeah. So, uh, and I how, was, I was, how did I, that even happen? I mean, your place, like your town, was like super small. Like, no, I moved there. I, oh. moved, I moved when I was thirteen, right? So I moved, try to move where business was at. You Wait, so you moved out of your at. parents' house when you were thirteen? Uh, no, I moved. They moved with oh, me. Oh, okay. But I moved out when I was fifteen, which is That's also very so young. young. Yeah. Wow. Um, 
But yeah, I got into, um, I was signed, I was a rapper. Oh, yeah. is this stuff still out? It is out. Wow. Uh, I went, my first tour was when I was 16. I opened up for Fuji's. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Europe. For their first, they, their first tour too. So. Yeah. But you didn't even really have like a mentor, right? You were like, did it, were your friends also music or did you have uh, like family? I, I did have uh, some sort of a mentor. It was the producer that produced me as a rapper who taught me a lot from yeah. like uh, uh, about programming and production in general, what a yeah. producer is supposed to be and do, you know. And you were also really into like skateboarding, right? And like the punk. Yes, punk my whole scene. life. Wow. Skateboarding my whole life. It's, yeah. Skateboard brought me to music. It wasn't that I uh, was into music and then skateboarding. Skateboarding was always, always number one. Wow. And then skateboarding brought me into like punk rock and then eventually hip hop. So, yeah. yeah. How did you actually transition from like the punk rock to hip hop? You know what? There was a time where those two like clashed uh, mm -hmm. into one and everyone yeah. was listening to punk rock. And then um, I, I listened to hip hop before that, but kind of left it a bit. Mm -hmm. And then when like, uh, remember when House of Pain, Cypress Hill and all that, became like skateboard culture almost yeah so that like with all we're being from sweden too like it's a snowboard culture skateboard culture oh and uh, that type of hip-hop mixed with all the this the punk rock yeah you know? so everyone's all, all uh, you know into both punk rock and that type of hip-hop so yeah. yeah and then how were you able to get like your first even like writing sessions well I started to produce a female rapper in my band, and mm -hmm. uh, funny story is my first A and R was Pete Tong, who signed. Yeah, yeah. So I started to work with Pete Tong really, really, really young, um, and then second person to commit to having fly me over to the U.S. to work was JC. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, I worked on Hard Knock Life then, and it was like before. I was still on, t I got a tape, like he just sent me the tape, it's like eight channels uh, of Hard Knock Life. Uh, so yeah, from there it kind of opened up a door for me to, to switch from uh, just being like a beat maker to start writing more and, and having people ask for me to come to sessions and stuff like that. Yeah. So I started to like fly over to, to America more. Yeah. And at that point I was still so young and like still learning English and you know everything it was like landing in New York the first time with the you know big buildings yeah, everything it it's unreal so yeah wow. were you ever afraid like being so young and like the language barrier especially yeah it was it was hard like uh, I stayed longer times and I noticed like after two three weeks I started to fail on everything yeah. uh, you know like because you when you st when you have the language, your humor is not with you. Your jokes right. is not there. Yeah, it's like you can't. Different. Yeah, yeah. So you can go a certain, uh, 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 you know, amount of time before you start like, ah, I need to speak my language again, and I wanted to go yeah. home or meet someone in the area that could speak Swedish. But mm -hmm. yeah. Have you always been, like, you knew from the onset that you wanted to be both the artist and the person behind the scenes? Uh, I didn't really know that. I started out as an artist and then to be able to be an artist at that point I needed to you know create my own beats because right. no one else was making them. So and then I just fell in love with like learning like drum machines and stuff and the first time I wrote like uh, started to write more like um, melodies and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was writing lyrics before that but not melodies. I felt that it was something for me and I started to just write more full-on songs. Which was funny to me, because I come from punk rock and hip-hop where I was so against everything. It was like, you know, pop, culture, yeah. everything was like... Actually, yeah, yeah. How, did you, how did that transition happen? I don't know, it's just, you know what? Just something in you when you're creating and someone liking it. Hmm. Starts, you start to explore and finding that, like, just trying to, you know, making your own music and melodies were such a tricky, you know, um, uh, thing to, to, to handle. It's like a beast, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, to, to, to be able to create something really original and really cool yeah. with melodies was something that was really interesting to me, mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah. And what was the reason behind, like, I guess after the rap, mostly you've been in like more than like a duo or more people. 
Well, what yeah, is well, the... I produced for other people yeah. for like very long time. Yeah. Uh, I produced songs for, for for you know all the pop artists for yeah. a long time. But when um, when uh, you mean with Mike Snow and everything? Yeah, or, just yeah, like yeah. why haven't you been a solo artist recently? Well, to be to be honest, is I mean I was alone producing for a long time, and it felt almost like choosing because that's life making mm -hmm. music is your life every day you make music you know it's like going through life without a partner why would you do mm. that you know yeah i like that it's like you, it's it's not about you don't want to do it on your own it's like sharing you want to share and and experience like what is a an amazing vacation if you don't have anyone to you know mm -hmm. share it with or like i don't know for me that's like this journey uh Doing that alone wouldn't be the same thing, yeah. you know, so. What did you see in Linus that made you decide that you wanted to actually be <laughs> That duo? was easy because I am very, very energetic and mm -hmm. I like, I scream and shout and dance <laughs> and that cause yeah. I, you know, the, the creating in the studio, it's like, it's very intense with me. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that other people weren't sometimes mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so when i found someone that was uh, on the same level as me of uh, the intensity in the studio i was like you we should talk yeah <laughs> <laughs> so and we did and it was like um it was early days of mike snow my other band mm -hmm. and uh i asked linus to first to remix uh and then we just started to hang out yeah and it became the birth of galantis mm -hmm. What would you say are the biggest struggles so far for Galantis? Biggest struggles? Mm -hmm. uh, it's mixing, uh, uh, I mean, family and, and the touring life of dance music is just so heavy. Like, it doesn't matter if we are in a cycle of a new album or out of it, because we tour all year anyway, yeah. you know? It's like, Damn. there's like basically no weekends we would ever be anywhere but at a, yeah. you know, on stage. And and then you mix that up with all the headline touring, festivals, the European summer festivals to all the dance music festivals. Yeah. And then you mix that in with being in Vegas like once a week, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, your cool. your schedule is full and both me and Linus have family. Uh, so it's, it's hard. Like you, you got to do the, you know, a lot of the times yeah. you're flying 20 hours to be home for 24 hours yeah. and, then, and leave again, you know, so. Did you have initial inspirations for the branding? Everything is like co cohesive from the onset. Well, yeah, uh, when we were like trying to, you know, make up the sounds of Galantis and, and what yeah. Galantis will be about, we, um, we knew that we were also wanted to do something that was with us from the start for yeah. the artwork and for mm -hmm. the visual yeah. aspect so we started to just work on that as the same way we work on music basically we're just yeah. trying different things we're like working with fur we threw in we yeah. wanted we wanted something from the ocean so we like put a jellyfish yeah. on there and we call it the sea fox it's just uh the work working mm -hmm. progress name and yeah. that, that original first one was the one actually this one Ooh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's the first one, and then we just keep on trying yeah. to do new ones. And uh, and yeah. was it that you got the inspiration from like an aviary in Hong Kong? Yes, for okay. the album, it was. I know exactly where that is because I'm from Hong Kong. Oh, so really? I think I know which aviary you're talking about. Yes. I read that. I was like, oh my god, I have to bring this up. Yes. So that I, was really I cool. went there with my daughter, and yeah. I was in the aviary, and I read the sign, and I called Linus, and I felt like, like there was just. I love that place so much and I felt it was something similar to where we were in like our heads when we were trying to work on tour, mm. like uh, we were forced into different situations where we just had to find our inspiration and, and we knew it's there but now we're just on a plane or whatever. I felt like the aviary was like that because I know there's all these beautiful birds here and I just need to find them. Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what have you learned so far about being in Galantis? Hmm. I think I learn something every day. Mm -hmm. I think touring, being on stage, um, something is being, I'm being taught something, you know, all the time. Uh, it's hard to say what, but you can tell when you look back yeah. where we started and, uh, you know, how we was thinking, how we did the show or how we make music that it's, uh, it's been even more, uh, 
you know, intense with Galantis than my previous hmm. stuff because it's so everyday, yeah. you know. So it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool how fast everything has been yeah. going. But it, it's, it's, um, it doesn't feel like fast for us because it's been so much, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. And did you feel like going into Galantis you had pressure because all your previous like projects have been so successful? Did you have this voice behind you? A little bit. I mean, maybe mostly from myself. Hmm. Yeah. Because I felt like if I'm starting another one, I just I wanted to work. And then at what level, I don't know. But I mean, for me, I guess it was. It works if you go and do a show and people, even if it's for 500 people, and they bought a ticket to see mm -hmm. you and you know they're they're on with it. That I think that was my first. Like I just needed to be there. Uh, so, but. We definitely passed that. Yeah, now. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Last question: What do you want you to be remembered for, and what do you want Galantis to be remembered for? Well, they kind of go somewhat similar, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, for Galantis, I just really want us to be remembered for pushing um, dance music forward mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, kind of using the freedom that dance music is supposed to be. You know that like you're not stuck because for a second there sometimes dance music thinks that it needs to be a certain like tempo or like yeah you shouldn't mix house with whatever trap mm -hmm. or techno or whatever but like i feel right now is where it should be when it's all an open format you know it's just it's dance music and we use that and i'm happy that we uh entered it when I think dance music needed it. I'm not saying yeah. we changed it, but a lot mm -hmm. of people did do the same thing as we did and yeah. started to just use the freedom that mm -hmm. dance music should have. And for myself, I feel like um, I want to be remembered for pushing music forward in any turn, like mm -hmm. in any way. Like even if it's like a, writing a pop song, like toxic to. Uh, starting Mike Snow and mm -hmm. no one was doing that and jumping into Galantis when dance music was in a certain place and you know like I feel like I always try to be somewhat of like inventing new sounds and new ways of writing songs whatever. Yeah. yeah pushing things forward as much as I can yeah, yeah. I love that thank you so uh, much thank you thanks <laughs> bye